Hi guys, there's probably nothing worse than listening to a Tory MP who voted Remain, probably because they knew that Brexit would be a disaster for Britain, to be then put in a position of power where they have to defend Brexit. Case in point, Andrew Bowie, one of the few Scottish Tories in the House of Commons, and currently, wait for it, Under Secretary of State for Exports, I kid you not. Listen to him in probably the most pathetic way possible defend Brexit, a Brexit he voted against. Have a listen to this. Let's have a look at uh, this headline in The Independent. More than 40% of British exports have disappeared from European shelves since Brexit. It's based on new research from Aston University. Do you accept, Andrew, uh, that Brexit has made it more difficult for businesses to export to goods and services? You are the exports minister. Yeah, look, uh, our exit from the uh, single market and the customs union has obviously changed the relationship made between it, British exporters. And made it more difficult. And get it. But we are determined to resolve the, 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 the situations, to make it easier for British exporters to get their goods onto shelves uh, within the European continent, as each day... How? That's not within your power. You can say what you want, but you have no control over the checks that are carried out on the EU side, the bureaucracy that's required on the EU side, within the single market, I should say. You have no control over that. You can't say to the European Union, uh, can you reduce some of the bureaucracy because it's difficult for our exporters? You have no control over that. You can say on TV, we're going to reduce the paperwork, we're going to make it easier for exports, exporters, but you can't. It's all talk. It goes past. Uh, people, uh, companies in this country are finding it easier to get their goods uh, into Europe. We're determined to make it even easier uh, than it is but has right it now. made it harder? Has Brexit made it harder? It's changed the relationship. There's no doubt about that. And of course, it takes time for companies to, to uh, get to grips with, to understand and to easily navigate. And how long does it take? Businesses have said that they are getting used to it. They have got used to it. But the reality is that nothing is going to change. Outside the single market is outside the single market. You have no control over what's happening within the single market. If the EU decides tomorrow to impose new checks, you have no control over that. You have to follow the rules. Now, some businesses have got round the problem by opening premises uh, within the EU, within the single market. But that's a cost for them. That's not a benefit. It's a benefit when it comes to dealing with the problems of, ben of Brexit, but it's not a benefit of Brexit. It's a cost that they have to bear. And of course, the cost is passed on to the consumer the new rules and the systems that are in place. We're, we're in the Department for International Trade to right. actually well, simplify the gonna, process. How are you going to make it easier? I mean, because the research also shows a reduction in product varieties being exported to the EU. Isn't that going to hurt businesses if they're producing fewer things because they can't sell them? Yeah, but we're, 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 we're determined to drive up exports, not how? just to Europe, but around. <laughs> we're determined. Believe in Brexit. If you believe enough, then businesses can export without all this bureaucracy and, uh, and all this pain and cost. So all you have to do is believe in it enough. We're back to 2016 or post-2016 where the requirement for Brexit to work was just for people to believe in it enough. Around the world, look at what we're doing in Australia and New Zealand. Look at the discussions that are going on with well, the, the trade CP deal TPP. That the look former DEFRA minister, George Eustace, said was a rotten deal, even well, though he supported Brexit. Well, uh, you won't be surprised to find that I disagree wholeheartedly with George right. Eustace's uh, 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 um, prognosis or... Uh but George Eustace was right. See, George Eustace originally said it was a good deal. Then he said it was a bad deal. British farmers said it was a bad deal, while Australian and New Zealand farmers said it was a good deal. It was good for them. They, they couldn't believe what the British government had signed up to. They were, the New Zealand and Australian governments were basically laughing at the UK government. Say, are these people stupid? Look at what they have signed away. Um, they've got nothing and we've got everything or pretty much everything. Yeah, you can disagree with George Eustace, but on this particular issue, George Eustace was right. Uh, of the, of the, the deals that we've done with Australia and New Zealand, they're groundbreaking, especially for many areas of the UK economy that are growing financial services, uh, All right. just being one of them. You want to increase exports to the EU yes. from where we are now. How are you going to do it? Uh, various ways. We're in the beginning of, uh, in the middle of discussions. We've got a target of getting uh, the UK up to a trillion pounds of exports. Of course, Europe. 
<laughs> we have a target. Anyone can put a target in place. How are you going to achieve that target? Obviously, this is another one of the Tory government's targets when, you know, apply it to NHS waiting list. We have a target of reducing the waiting list. We don't actually have a plan on how to achieve that. We don't actually have, a, a, you know, um, a roadmap. We just have a target, an arbitrary number. Yeah, we, we're going to we're going to trade increase trade by a billion pounds or a trillion pounds or whatever he said. Yeah, it's a number. It means absolutely nothing if you have no plan, if you if you have no roadmap. Europe is a is a major uh, market for British goods. Sure, they I want have. to buy our stuff, and we're working hard across the board to simplify. Yes, businesses in the EU want to buy British products, but if they can't get them, they'll go elsewhere. We've seen it before. The problem for many EU importers is that there are huge costs involved. There are delays involved. There's paperwork involved. Now, some businesses want to sell British products. They have to sell British products. So they will jump through the hoops necessary. They will pay the extra costs. But if they can find the same goods or similar goods in the EU where there are no restrictions, where the, the prices are cheaper, of course they're going to buy from the EU. Makes business sense. The process by what, which what British companies yeah. get their goods into Europe. Right, but imagine I know nothing about this, and actually I don't know anything about how businesses <laughs> trade. How do you do it? We're going to simplify the customs process. That's going to enge mean engaging. You can't. You can't simplify the customs process because you're not in control of the of the customs process. What is wrong with this guy? You know, the, the worst thing about all of this is that he voted to remain. Now, he may have done it for political reasons, or he may have done it because he knew what was coming down the road. Now, if he did it for political reasons, OK, we'll park that. But if he knew what was going to happen, how can he sit there now and defend something that he knew was going to be a disaster? It, there's an interesting thing about Scott, the Tories. A lot of, I think most Scottish Tories, voted against Brexit because they knew, because they were, in a sense, they were separated from the ideology of Westminster to a certain extent. And, but they knew that it was going to be damaging to Scottish industry. And in Scotland, the feeling was not so much about you know, closing the borders and turning Britain into a North Korea of Europe. Uh, there were real concerns about how the fishing industry, the whiskey industry, and other industries will be affected by Brexit. And Tory MPs, you know, rightly said, uh, it's probably not a good idea to vote for Brexit. And they were right. And now he's here trying to defend it. ...with various countries across uh, the European Union and, of course, uh, making it uh, a simpler process to do all the Are paperwork, the new paperwork. Are you to do that individually with countries in the EU rather than doing it with the EU as a whole? There will be a variety of discussions that are ongoing between the UK and the EU as a whole and individual countries. Are they receptive? You can't negotiate with individual countries when it comes to this. You can't say, OK, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to um, have different paperwork for Poland than we will for France. No, you're, you're a third country exporting into the single market. If the countries of the EU are in the single market, then you have to follow the same rules. That's why there's a single market, not a bunch of different markets working in unison. There is one market. That's why it's called the single market. And the single market has uniform rules. Now, I don't believe for a second that um, that Andrew doesn't know this, but Andrew's in a position where he has to defend the illogical. And it's pathetic. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.